Hi there, it's Ryan Liberty. In this video, I'm going to answer the question, what is dissociative identity disorder, also known as DID? Let's find out. Ooh, ah. All right, here we are, and we're gonna answer the question, what is dissociative identity disorder, also known as DID? But first, I just have a little quick thing to say, which is that this is not the diagnostic criteria, so this should not be used to diagnose yourself. A trained professional should be the one who's doing that. Um, feel free, though, to use this, dis this as a description of what dissociative identity disorder is. Uh, again, not to diagnose somebody, but also I just like to say if the label of dissociative identity disorder in any way bothers you, if it causes you stress, if it in any way impedes in your or the healing, in your healing or the healing of a loved one, then you don't have to use the label, you can just let it go. It's totally fine. Uh, but again, this is just a quick description, so let's get into what it is. So dissociative identity disorder has to do, and I've got my notes here, I'm always checking my notes to make sure I've got good information for you. It's got two or more distinct personality states. Uh, in some cultures, they're called possessions, and that's, that's generally understood um, when you come in to see a therapist. And if you talk about possessions, then they should have an idea of what you're talking about, but you can always go ahead and explain that to them. Um, they are sometimes called alters, and something to be aware of is that the the concept of alters, of having different personalities, um, like this used to be called multiple personality disorder, um, so this idea that you have to have separate and distinct personalities, that's not necessary. That's um, not actually true. That is something that does happen with dissociative identity disorder, but it's not a requirement for you to be having diagnosed as um, dissociative identity disorder. I'm tripping up on my words there. So um, there's a lot to get over, so let's go over it here. Um, we've got discontinuity in any way of your affect, your behavior, your consciousness, memory, perception, cognition, or sensory motor functioning. So if any of those show discontinuity, that could be an indication that DID is happening. It's something that you can self-report, but it's also something that others could be seeing in you, which is kind of interesting, because not all diagnoses are like that. It, usually it has to be coming from you, but for this particular disorder, the, the information that this is something that's happening could be ha coming from other people. And that's typically because if you're experiencing dissociative identity disorder, sometimes when you're in one of those other personality states, you are completely unaware that you're even in that state. Um, but other people will be able to see it and point it out to you or to a professional. Now, there's often gaps in the recall of everyday events, personal info, and traumatic events, um, and it's not the ordinary forgetting. So very often, because you are switching between personality states and it is a dissociative um, disorder, dissociation means you kind of like check out, there are going to be gaps in your memory um, from switching, so that's why this comes into play. It's something that interferes with your everyday life. Um, it's not a part of a accepted cultural or re religious practice. Um, so if it is something that's just something that your culture does, that would be considered normal. It's not considered to be dissociative identity disorder. And in children, it's not fantasy play. So you know, play, children play and they make up different personalities and different characters or they make up imaginary friends and that is not dissociative identity disorder. Um, possession, possessions can be normal as I discussed in the beginning and dissociative identity disorder possessions, this is how we distinguish well, whether the, dis the possession is normal or not. Um, these are recurrent, unwanted, involuntary, and distressing for the person. Whereas a possession that's just a cultural possession, um, that's just part of the culture that you live in, is not going to be any of those things. Recurrent, unwanted, involuntary, and distressing. Uh, it's not something that's attributed to the physiological effects of a substance, or uh, it's not a medical condition, so there's nothing going on with your brain. It's all psychological. And something that I found worth noting, because this is a very distressing disorder, 
uh, over 70% of people who have dissociative identity disorder have attempted suicide. So that, if that doesn't highlight the seriousness of this disorder, I don't know what will. The good news is that there is treatment for DID, and that is psychotherapy, um, family therapy, group therapy, and there can also be antidepressants used for mood, but there is a way to treat this. I know it's very overwhelming for those that experience it. It can be treated. Uh, a professional will definitely be able to walk you through and put up a plan to help you out with this because it is a serious thing and it's often a long-term care. So what does it feel like for the person who's experiencing dissociative identity disorder? Well, in the body, you're going to feel the symptoms of depersonalization. You're not going to feel completely attached to who you are, especially when you're switching between um, personality states. You may feel like you're out of control of your body. Your body's kind of possessed and taken over and doing its own thing. You may feel symptoms of conversion. Um, so conversion symptoms are things like fainting, weakness, temporary blindness, deafness, all those kinds of things happening in the body because it's as though your body is being taken over and each personality may have their own characteristics. Each alter may have, you know, you may have a deaf alter, you may have one that's frightened, you may have one that's very strong and aggressive, so each one's going to be a little different. And I should say while I'm talking on that, that you could have two alters, you could have many, or you could have zero alters, it could just be a change in your mo your mind state. Um, not your mood, but your mind state. So that's how it feels in your body. As far as what's going on in your head, you've got, you may be hearing voices or thoughts and they're out of your control. That Again, that could be in some of those states. Um, you may be thinking things like, well, these are not my actions, these are not my thoughts, this is out of my control. You may experience dissociative amnesia um, or dissociative fugue states. Um, and you may, of course, have the gaps in memory as a result of switching between personalities. Um, emotionally, you're most likely going to feel confused. Um, there's sometimes a little bit of denial, actually, about what's going on because, it's, again, you don't know that you're switching necessarily, so you may not realize it, but you will be confused when people come to you and say, like, you weren't behaving the same way a few hours ago. Um, you may feel, have very intense feelings that kind of come seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, and again, that may also be related to the switching between states. And as far as your behavior, you may find that you're speaking and it feels like it's not coming from you. Um, you may do things without feeling like you're in control of them. You may have seizures. You may find yourself with things that you don't remember doing. So you may come, you may all of a sudden see yourself in the living room and there's shopping bags and you don't know what happened and how they got there and why you're even in the living room. Um, but it's, it's just happened because most likely what's happened is you were in a different state and dissociated while all of that was going on and now you've come out of the dissociation and you've realized oh I'm in the living room with shopping bags that's really weird <laughs> so it is a uh, I'm laughing but it's a very serious disorder uh, it's very stressful but again it is something that can be treated and I urge you to go see a professional if it's something that you suspect you or somebody else has I do appreciate you taking the time to learn about it today and thank you for joining me Hey, it's Ryan Liberty. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up, share with a friend, and leave any questions or comments down below because that would really help me out. If you're somebody who's gone through a traumatic event and you're feeling cut off from the people around you, I have a free course that will help with that, so please click to get it. And if you'd like to see the rest of my videos, please click subscribe. As always, I want to remind you that your life matters. Nobody can question your worth. However it is that you're feeling, whatever it is that you're going through, it's okay and you are loved. Thanks again for watching.